Hello friends! My name is Liz and I started this channel because I recently made the decision that I'm going to leave my current career and try to return to the classroom as an English language arts teacher. Um, whenever I was in middle school, I came up with the idea that I wanted to be a high school English teacher and that's all I ever wanted to be. I had a one-track mind, so I went to school for um, a secondary English ed, or we called it integrated language arts, which means that I took classes in reading, writing, literature, drama, journalism, things like that, so I could teach um, a wide variety of language arts. Um, my plan was that I would graduate. I was a December graduate. I would substitute teach during the spring semester, and by the following academic year, I would have a teaching job. Well, that didn't happen. Um, my naivete um, got the better of me. I thought that's what was going to happen because it, it's not what's supposed to happen. Um, I went to a school in um, Ohio. I got certified to teach in both Pennsylvania and Ohio and then went on probably about 40 separate interviews and never got a call back or never got a second interview. Um, I even got invited to interview for an elementary special ed position, which was really odd because I only have had one class in special ed my entire collegiate career. So that was a little little out there. Um, I did a lot of long-term subbing for about two and a half years at several school districts in the area where I lived. Um, and while that was very rewarding, it still wasn't the same as having your own classroom. Um, you were teaching someone else's lessons and you knew that at the end of the semester, end of the term, you have to give that class and the students back to its original teacher. Um, so it really wasn't optimal, even though I, I learned a lot. Um, and talking to some of the teacher friends that I met along the way, um, many of them had stories to tell that I didn't want to hear. Like, I had to long-term sub six years before I got my full-time teaching job, and I was just not in a place financially or paying for health care um, that would that I had did not have um, full-time income. So I decided, okay, well, what else can I do? So I was an RA. Um, oh, and also relocating out of the area of my country wasn't, um, wasn't really an option at the time. I know a lot of friends were going down south to like Florida and North Carolina and finding teaching jobs, but that just wasn't an option at the time. So um, I had been a resident assistant my senior year of college, and I really liked it. So I went to my boss at the time and was like, you supervise RAs, so how did you get your job? And she said, well, you can go to school for that. So lo and behold, I moved up to central New York and went to graduate school and got my master's in post-secondary higher education. Whenever I explain that to people, they're like, oh, you want to be a principal. How can you be a principal without having any, any teaching experience? And I'm like, no, that's not what it means. It means that you are going to be a student affairs administrator. So after getting my master's, that's exactly what I did. And I um, spent the past oh, nine and a half, ten, about ten years now working in higher education, primarily housing and residence life. For nine and a half years, I was a live-in residence life professional, which means I was a hall director, an assistant director of residence life. I served in um, on-call rotations, worked with students in the residence halls where they lived, um, helped them through emergencies, supervised student staff, things like that. Um, so I did that for nine and a half years. That type of job has a shelf life. Eventually, you're going to be tired of being on-call 24-7, um, dealing with with students having issues in crisis at 2.30 in the morning. It's eventually just going to take its toll. So at the end of nine and a half years, I was done. And also at that time, I decided to move closer to my boyfriend. We had done long distance for about three years, and we decided that was it, no more long distance. So I moved about an hour north to the D.C. metro area, and found a job um, in the registrar's office at a college. At the registrar's office. Um, about a month in, I realized that wasn't for me. It was highly administrative and I never saw students. So I put my feelers out and eventually landed a job in housing and residence life 
in the housing assignments portion at another school in the DC metro area. And so that's where I'm at right now. I've been there for about two years. And while it is in housing and residence life that has, um, that calls on a lot of the experience I've had for the past 10 years, still highly administrative, don't really work with students. And I've just kind of realized that that's what I'm gonna get out of that job. Um, there's no prospects for advancement. I'm not open to moving all around the country at this point in time. So, oh, you know, I might as well, it's now or never, might as well go back to the classroom to, um, to do what I've said that I've enjoyed all the time, um, all along, um, working with students, being creative. I'm very developmental. Um, I work as a part-time tutor as well with middle school and high school students in the area, and that has been really great. And, and doing that has kind of led me back to um, seeking to be in the classroom again. So it's December 2017, and I am on my way back to the classroom, either middle school or high school. I'm open to either. Um, I have completed about half the requirements that I need for my... Virginia Depart um, Virginia teaching license. I do live in Virginia. So I'm going to give that a shot. And my goal is to have everything completed, my packet filled out and sent to the Virginia Department of Education by March 1st and to be teaching next academic year, 2018-2019. The vets hope that plan works better than the one that I had 15 years ago when I was finishing college. So we will see. Fingers crossed. Subscribe and join me on this journey.